How do you feel great on vacation? Like really good? Easy. You go to Aruba. You'll spend your time relaxing on cool white sand beaches and floating in healing blue water. You'll immerse yourself in natural wonder and find your center on an island where things move at your speed. You won't just feel great. You'll feel relaxed, renewed, and ready for life. That's the Aruba effect. Plan your trip at aruba.com. It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 2436, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another Friday show where I answer your questions. On all the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you like an audiobook with permission from the authors, of course. Now, I'll let you know how you can send in your own question at the end of the show and get a copy of our workbook for free. But for now, let's hear today's question and start optimizing your life. Today's question came via email. Filippo from the UK writes, Dear Dr. Neil, I just want to thank you for your podcast. I have been listening to it for the last four years. Please promise you will never stop. I am 32 years old and I have been working out consistently six times a week for the last 10 years. I like doing cardio and calisthenic workouts. I have noticed that my strength is not as good as it used to be. So my question is, do you know when muscular strength starts to decrease? Do you think that when we experience this reduced strength, we should rest more often? Best wishes. Thank you for your question, Filippo. Thank you so much for your kind words and for being a longtime listener. I'm thrilled that you find the show so helpful and I'm actually really thrilled that you've been consistently active for so long. Now, the timing of your question is so perfect because earlier this week, I read a two-part post from Kate Galliott titled, You Can't Have All of the Fitness All of the Time. Those were episodes 1243 and 1244. In those episodes, we talked about how we have to prioritize our fitness goals. So let's talk about how that relates to your question specifically. First, Filippo, you asked whether there is a specific time in our lives when we start to see decreases in our muscular strength. And unfortunately, yes, we do see this starting to occur in our late 20s. So when men and women start to reach the ages of 27, 28, and 29 years, our muscles begin to atrophy. This means that our muscle cells start to get smaller and smaller. If our muscles are getting smaller, then that means our muscular strength will suffer as well. What's even more unfortunate is that as we age, our muscles continue to atrophy or shrink in size. Now, this all sounds pretty awful, but the good news is that we can slow this process down. We can't reverse this process completely, but again, we can slow it down. How? by prioritizing strength training exercises, by dedicating some of our workouts to rebuilding this muscle. Filippo, you mentioned that you are exercising about six days a week. And you mentioned that the focus of these workouts has been performing cardiovascular activities. So what I would recommend, and probably Kate Galliott would recommend as well based on her posts earlier this week, is to refocus some of your attention away from cardio and toward strength training specifically. So instead of performing cardio six days a week, maybe perform cardio four days a week and dedicate the other two days to strength training. Now you may be asking, just two days of strength training a week, is that enough? No, but it's a good starting point. You don't wanna dedicate too much time to strength training if you're new to it. In fact, the American College of Sports Medicine provides specific recommendations for those that are new to strength training and for building larger muscles. But before I get to those recommendations, you may also be asking, but if I cut back on my cardio, won't my cardiovascular endurance suffer? Yes. But as Kate Galliott explained earlier this week, this is very normal. As Kate said, quote, we can't have all of the fitness all of the time, end quote. Instead, we have to prioritize our workouts and be okay with the fact that some of our other fitness goals may take a back seat to our new goals. So in your case, Filippo, this may mean that, for right now, you may have to be okay with making your cardiovascular fitness less of a priority. Okay, back to the American College of Sports Medicine's recommendations. For those that are new to strength training, they recommend that you dedicate only two days per week to start. Be sure to skip a day in between strength training sessions. 
So let's say your first strength training workout happens on a Monday. That means your next strength training workout shouldn't be until Wednesday at the earliest. Now, what specific exercises should you be doing? Well, according to the American College of Sports Medicine, we need to start by focusing on all of the big muscle groups. That means during these first few workouts, you wanna perform one to two sets of exercises for the big muscle groups like the shoulders, chest, arms, back, and legs. Now, for someone that wants to build strength, it's recommended that you aim to lift heavy weights and only lift them three to five times for each set. Now, I need to mention that this recommendation is not great for someone that's new to strength training. This is because lifting heavy weights without experience is a surefire way to get injured. So instead, I would recommend that you start by lifting lighter weights eight to 12 times until you get used to the movements. Now, I know that because of the pandemic, it may not be a great idea to hire a personal trainer at the moment, but organizations like the American College of Sports Medicine, the American Council on Exercise, and the National Academy of Sports Medicine post some wonderful instructional videos online. These videos can show you how to perform these exercises using proper form. So once you start getting used to performing exercises for the major muscle groups correctly and performing eight to 12 repetitions of each, you can then think about adding more weight to make lifts heavier. But you don't wanna add too much weight too quickly. A good general rule of thumb when it comes to upper body exercises like chest, shoulders, and upper back exercises is to add no more than five pounds or about two and a half kilograms at a time. So let's say you're performing a chest exercise like a bench press you find that you can lift 135 pounds or about 61 and a half kilograms eight times, no problem. This means you are probably ready to add some weight to make the lift heavier. To be safe, this means it would be best to only increase the weight of the bench press by five pounds or two and a half kilograms total. So the next time you attempt the lift, it should weigh no more than 140 pounds or about 64 kilograms. If this new weight can be lifted another eight times with no problem, you can add another five pounds or another two and a half kilograms and so on. When it comes to adding weight to lower body exercises, like squats, for example, we can be a little bit more lenient. That's because the legs contain larger muscles and are used to handling heavier weights. So the rule of thumb here is to add no more than 20 pounds or about nine kilograms at a time. So Here are the main takeaways. Yes, our muscles do begin to decrease in size as we get older. This usually starts in our late 20s and continues as we age. But we can slow this process down by lifting weights. If we really want to build strength, then we need to think about eventually lifting heavy weights, weights that we can only lift three to five times. And I know that spending some days lifting weights may decrease the amount of time you spend performing cardio. But if getting stronger is one of your goals, then I think it's worth it. We're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search, but match. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it makes hiring all in one place so easy because Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences. So the more you use Indeed, the better it gets. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash health. Just go to indeed.com slash health right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Thank you again for the question, Filippo. Now, if you want a physical copy of our Optimal Living Daily Workbook shipped to you for free and you're in the US, send in a relevant health-related question. It can be about diet, fitness, nutrition, stress management, anything along those lines, and your question will be answered right here on the show. If you're outside the U.S., 
we'll send you a digital version of the workbook. So to send in a question, you can email one to health at oldpodcast.com. Or if you wanna send in a question via audio and have your voice played on the show, come by oldpodcast.com slash ask to record from your computer. Or you can call in your question. The number is 161-I-LOVE-OHD. That's 1-614-568-3643. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. Answering them is my favorite part of the show. All right, that's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily. Thank you so much for listening every day and all the way through. I hope you have a great start to your weekend and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.